Welcome to Real Estate Briefing. The content of the briefing includes stories from the dark underbelly of Australia's long term refugee prisons. UK developers are offering sweeteners to one in five home buyers. More semiconductors, less housing, China's new economic plan. Outback Shire hopes modular homes will solve childcare woes. Greens want Brisbane landlords to face 650% rates hike if they raise tenants' rent. Stories from the dark underbelly of Australia's long term refugee prisons. Washington Post. Australia's Operation Sovereign Borders immigration policy has been held up as a model for the UK and Italy. The policy has been called one of the darkest chapters in Australia's history by Australian Greens lawmaker Nick McKim. Operation Sovereign Borders uses the military to turn away or detain migrants who attempt to reach the country by boat. As a result, more than 1,000 people are currently in immigration detention. Australia's migration laws allow for the indefinite detention of non citizens who do not hold a visa even if they have legitimate claims of asylum. The average stay in detention is 709 days, and the longest-held detainee has been in custody for 16 years. UK developers are offering sweeteners to one in five home buyers. Bloomberg. UK house builders are offering incentives such as free cars and home loan contributions to boost sales as demand falls amid rising borrowing costs and a squeeze in the cost of living. One in five new homes for sale at the end of October were offered with incentives, up from fewer than 1 in 10 over roughly the past decade, according to RBC Capital Markets. The number of new homes advertised with incentives has slightly declined as mortgage costs have fallen since August, helped by a pause in interest rates from the Bank of England. More semiconductors, less housing, China's new economic plan. New York Times. China has gradually begun steering away from real estate and local debt as a means to generate economic growth, and is instead investing in manufacturing and increasing central government borrowing. Banks controlled by the state have reduced real estate lending for the first time since 2005, instead directing vast sums to manufacturers in industries like electric cars and semiconductors. The shift away from real estate loans highlights Beijing's reluctance to bail out China's debt-ridden property market, which accounts for around a quarter of the economy and is currently experiencing significant declines in prices, sales, and investment. The move towards manufacturing loans carries risks, China already has a surplus of factories and an increase in exports resulting from greater emphasis on manufacturing could antagonize trading partners. Furthermore, China's extra lending poses a challenge for the West, which is attempting to foster extra investment in the same industries through legislation like the Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act. Outback Shire hopes modular homes will solve childcare woes. ABC The Shire of Wyndham East Kimberley in Western Australia plans to build modular homes to attract childcare workers who are struggling to find accommodation due to a housing shortage. The Shire will seek state government funding for the $4 to $5 million project, which would involve the construction of 10 one-bedroom modular homes. The lack of available housing has resulted in a shortage of childcare workers in the region, with waiting lists for childcare facilities growing and many families unable to access the care they need. The housing crisis has also led to difficulties in attracting professionals to the area. Greens want Brisbane landlords to face 650% rates hike if they raise tenants' rent. ABC. The Greens in Brisbane have proposed a policy that would impose a 650% rate surcharge on landlords who increase their tenants' rent. The aim of the policy is to discourage property owners from raising rents and effectively freeze rents across the city. The surcharge would be in place for two years and would apply to any investor who increases rent beyond what was charged on January 1 of this year. The Greens hope that by implementing this measure, landlords will choose to keep rents at their current levels. The policy is part of the Greens' housing proposals as they vie to take control of Brisbane City Council in next year's election. RBA's Bullock set for first-rate hike as inflation lingers. Bloomberg. Australia's central bank, the Reserve Bank of Australia, RBA, is expected to raise interest rates on Tuesday, ending a four-meeting pause. The RBA is trying to ensure inflation falls back inside its 2-3% to target by the end of 2025 and may signal further tightening is needed. However, a handful of economists expect the RBA to leave rates unchanged at 4.1%. The RBA is cautious about the impact of tightening on Australian borrowers who are overwhelmingly on variable rates, unlike in the US where most mortgages are fixed for 30 years. Call for golf courses to be open to housing. BBC. Architectural firm RCCA has released plans to build 650 homes on Enfield Golf Club's 18-hole course in North London. The firm hopes the proposals, part of a project called Holes to Homes, will spark a debate on how the city uses land.
The plans also include walking and cycle routes, wetlands and facilities such as a health center, gym and mobility hub. The firm's co-founder, Russell Curtis, said the proposals were not realistic and no planning application would be made to Enfield Council. The course is currently protected from development by its classification as metropolitan open land. The situation is dire, nearly two-thirds of potential home buyers would welcome a recession if it meant lower mortgage rates, but here's what they're missing. Yahoo! Almost two-thirds of potential home buyers in the US would welcome a recession if it helped them to be able to afford a home, according to a Credit Karma study. The current housing market is keeping many Americans from buying a home, with 82% of respondents saying the country is grappling with an unprecedented housing affordability crisis. However, a recession could also affect the availability of homes for sale, which has been low for some time. Difficult to stomach, rich young Americans are ditching the dream of homeownership as mortgage rates and housing costs hit new highs, here's why more of them are choosing to rent. Yahoo! Sky-high mortgage rates and other housing costs are causing some high-income millennials and Gen Z to reconsider their timeline for the age-old American dream of homeownership. The average monthly mortgage payment on a new home is now 52% higher than the average apartment rent, according to a report from the Wall Street Journal, Wall Street Journal, based on data from real estate firm CBRE. On top of those extortionate borrowing costs, house prices are so high today that prospective buyers need an annual income of almost $115,000 just to afford a median-priced U.S. home. That is almost $40,000 more than what the typical household earns. Look at any major city, look at the stagnating minimum wage, look at the housing costs going up and also rent going up, it's not easy to live anywhere right now, Tory Dunlap told Moneywise. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your favorite observer from the Six Degrees World, Dr. Six, here to bring you the latest news from around the globe. Today, we've covered stories ranging from Australia's controversial immigration policy to the UK's housing market, China's economic plan, and even some interesting proposals for housing solutions. Let's dive into these stories and see what they mean for us. First up, we have Australia's Operation Sovereign Borders, which has been touted as a model for immigration policies by the UK and Italy. However, this policy has come under heavy criticism for its treatment of refugees and the indefinite detention of non-citizens. It's certainly a dark chapter in Australia's history and raises questions about the ethics and effectiveness of such measures. Moving on to the UK, we find that developers are getting creative with incentives to boost home sales. From free cars to home loan contributions, they're trying everything to entice buyers in a market that's seeing falling demand. It's an interesting approach, but will it be enough to turn things around? Only time will tell. Meanwhile, China is shifting its focus from real estate to manufacturing as a means to drive economic growth. This move comes as the country faces challenges in its property market, with declining prices and sales. While this shift carries risks, such as a surplus of factories and potential trade tensions, it shows China's determination to find alternative avenues for growth. In Australia's outback, the Shire of Wyndham East Kimberley is taking a unique approach to solve its childcare woes. They plan to build modular homes to attract childcare workers who are struggling to find accommodation due to a housing shortage. It's an innovative solution to a pressing problem and could pave the way for similar initiatives in other regions. Back in Brisbane, the Greens have proposed a policy that would impose a hefty rates hike on landlords who increase their tenants' rent. The aim is to discourage rent hikes and freeze rents across the city. While it's a bold move, it remains to be seen if it will have the desired effect and address the housing affordability issue. In the financial world, the Reserve Bank of Australia, RBA, is expected to raise interest rates, signaling its commitment to combating inflation. This move, however, comes with its own set of challenges, particularly for Australian borrowers who are predominantly on variable rates. It's a delicate balancing act for the RBA, and we'll be watching closely to see how it unfolds. On a lighter note, an architectural firm in London has released plans to build homes on a golf course, sparking a debate on land usage in the city. While the plans may not be realistic, they serve as a reminder that we need to think creatively about how we utilize our resources and spaces. And finally, we have some intriguing insights into the U.S. housing market. A study shows that a significant number of potential home buyers would welcome a recession if it meant lower mortgage rates, highlighting the affordability crisis they face. On the other hand, rising mortgage rates and housing costs are causing some high-income millennials and Gen Z to rethink their dreams of homeownership. It's a complex situation with no easy answers. So there you have it, folks. A whirlwind tour of the latest news from around the world. These stories highlight the challenges we face in areas such as immigration, housing, and economic growth. 
it's clear that we need innovative solutions and a willingness to adapt to changing circumstances. As always, I invite you to share your thoughts and questions. What do you make of these stories? Do you have any ideas for addressing these issues? Let's keep the conversation going. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.